get everybody's attention. Good Tiger afternoon. It is a great day to be a Tiger. Uh, this is the 2018 signing day for our uh, illustrious football program. I am Paul Bryan, I'm the Director of Athletics, and I'm, uh, I have the pleasure of introducing our SWAT Coach of the Year. He's, uh, he's one of our own. Let's give it up for Coach Roger Bond. you know, 
know, making sure that we see everyone. Uh, and they're so passionate about their program and what we are doing here at Grambling State University. So I'd like to thank you as well. With that being said, you know, I want to take this time to introduce uh, the 12 new members, uh, uh, the 12 new G-Men uh, to our program. Uh, two of them are already on campus. They're already in school. Uh, they joined us uh, here at, uh, at mid-semester and are currently working out and doing everything the right way in order to uh, be effective football players and students. The thing that's interesting about each and every one of these young men, all 12, is all 12, all 12 of them embody everything that we look for uh, in a G-Man. Uh, all of them are the trifecta. Uh, they're good people first, uh, and that's always the first thing that we look for uh, when we're recruiting players. Uh, are they good people? Uh, secondly, are they good students? Uh, which is something that's extremely important, especially in this day and age with APR and the rules that are in place. But even before that, you know, we want young men who want to be successful, not just on the field, but also off the field. And then lastly, they must be great players. Uh, as you know, if you're going to win any football games, they got to be able to run, they got to be able to catch, they got to be able to tackle, and they got to be able to block. So, uh, so with that being said, uh, these players, the first one, oh, well, go back, I'm sorry. Uh, the position breakdown. Uh, we were able to sign two Tigers, in case you want to know what the Tiger position is. It is, it is if, a, uh, if a receiver and a running back had a child, basically that's what a Tiger is. Uh, he's a mixture between the two. Uh, most of them are kind of small in stature, but they have the ability to run with the football extremely well. But then also they have the unique ability to run routes and catch the football uh, also. And uh, we created a position for uh, that particular type of student athlete because they can extremely affect the, they can ex ex affect the game uh, in a lot of the, uh, great ways. So we wanted to make sure that we include that position in our offense. We also signed one running back. We signed one quarterback, uh, two defensive ends, two linebackers, two safeties, uh, two cornerbacks. Uh, then the breakdown by state, five from the great state of Louisiana. Two from Texas, three from Florida, one from Georgia, and one from Alabama. Um, and these coaches have done a great job of getting out there and seeing those guys. Uh, but the first guy on the agenda, and this is in no particular order, is basically uh, by position. Uh, first guy that we signed was Donald Johnson. Donald Johnson, uh, some of you guys may know him. His mom uh, coaches here, uh, coaches uh, volleyball here. His dad actually cuts my hair. Uh, so, uh, but he's about 5'8", 165 pounds, uh, first team all district, uh, Shreveport Times all area football team, second team, played in 2017 Louisiana High School Coaches Association East-West All-Star Game. And then the thing about uh, Donald, he's an even better student. You know, Coach Todd told the story today. He texted him about 11 o'clock last night. Uh, and Coach got a little bit worried because he thought maybe he was thinking of going somewhere else, but basically he just wanted to just thank him for recruiting him and taking time out to spend time with him. And, and uh, in this day and age with a lot of things that's going on, it's refreshing to see, you know, 12 players like we have here uh, today. Next on the agenda, we have Dark West uh, Bruton, uh, who's another Tiger uh, from Leon High School, uh, which is in Tallahassee, Florida. He's about 5'6", 160 pounds. Uh, senior season, he had 1,015 all-purpose yards with seven touchdowns, uh, all Big Ben honorable mention, uh, Florida Panhandle. Uh, he had other offers from Jackson State, Southern, and Howard. Very, very explosive young man. Um, I like to say about a kid of his caliber, he's here and there at the same time. That's how quick he is. So um, he's one of those type that can cut the light off and be in the bed before the light cuts off. So uh, just an exceptional uh, athlete, uh, but even also an even better uh, young man. Next, we have uh, Keelan Elder. Uh, his dad and I were college teammates and college roommates uh, out of Duncanville High School. Uh, he's a kid that's been uh, groomed to play the running back position uh, since he was five years old. Uh, I was looking at him on, uh, on video today. His dad has video of him playing running back. Uh, at six years of age, all the way up until this particular point. Uh, but a, a very, very great person, uh, 900, 
152 yards, <coughs> rushing 16 touchdowns, 7.7 .7 yards per carry, uh, had a pair of 200-yard rushing games, uh, scored a TD in every game but one uh, senior season. Other offers from Cornell and Northeastern State. And we all know Cornell is an academic uh, institution, so he's a very, very bright young man, uh, very, very physical, uh, good-looking player that uh, is going to be uh, a really good player for us. Next, we have Quincy Mitchell, uh, quarterback from Southern Lab High School uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, he's about six feet, 175 pounds, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Uh, very, very dominant player, led his team to the state championship his junior year. Uh, 47 total TDs as a junior, 34 passing and 13 rushing, uh, 1,900 yards passing, uh, then 735 yards rushing. Uh, was also the offensive MVP in class 1A. Uh, like I said, 2016 state champion, and then in his senior year, had 22 total TDs, 18 passing, and four rushing uh, for 1,900 yards passing and 630 yards rushing. Uh, it was first team all district. He was originally committed uh, to Kent State, uh, but also had offers from UAB and also Alcorn State. Dante Barge. Uh, as a defensive end uh, from Helen Cox High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, he's 6'4", 240 pounds. Uh, he finished the uh, senior season with 22 tackles, 5.5 uh, tackles for loss, and three sacks. And other offers he had was Northwestern State uh, and Prairie View a &E. uh, We kind of got a, got a beat on this guy uh, going into his senior year, May of last year, uh, where we were able to get down there and see him uh, in a spring game. Very, very long guy with long arms, very athletic, uh, and very aggressive when it comes to pass rushing. Next, we have Sandiata Anderson, who's a uh, defensive end from North Clayton High School in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Sonny is uh, 6'4", 220 pounds. However, sometimes he seems like he's longer than that, uh, but he's not through grown. He's going to be a big kid. Uh, and he's extremely fast and extremely aggressive off the edge. First team all county, all region, uh, 4A, Atlanta Journal, Constitutions, all south side selection, recorded nine sacks of senior season. Other offers was from UNLV, Eastern Kentucky, and Alabama State. And then he's also an even better kid. You hear me say that over and over again about these kids. That's the theme of, of uh, this recruiting class is we got a lot of really good players but also really good people. Next, we have Matthew Cormier, uh, who's from Lake Charles, Louisiana, at Grunge High School. He's a linebacker, 6'3", 205 pounds. He's also a big time uh, sprinter in track. Uh, Louisiana Sports Writers Association, Class 4A Honorable Mention, All State, uh, Area All District, 35A First Team Selection. Uh, played for a Lake Charles All Star Team in the Narborough, Louisiana High School Coaches Association, I 10 Bowl. Very, very good football player. Mid-year guy that's on campus already, uh, uh, which is a well-decorated young man, Cecil Cherry uh, from, from Oklahoma Community College uh, by way of Frost, Frost Proof, uh, Florida. He's a linebacker, six feet, 240 pounds, probably a throwback linebacker. Uh, very, very physical guy. Uh, small school defensive, defensive player of the year uh, by the Lakeland Ledger in 2014. He's a four-star recruit, uh, ranked as the number 12 inside linebacker recruit nationally, and the number 45, 46 recruit at any position in the state of Florida as a senior coming out of high school. Offered by close to 40 colleges and universities out of high schools, including national powerhouses Alabama, Auburn, Florida State, and Clemson. Committed to the University of Texas out of high school and transferred to the University of South Florida shortly after beginning his uh, fall semester at uh, University of Texas. Accumulated 30 total tackles for a for USF side that went 10-2 in 2016 and earned a berth in the Birmingham Bowl. Transferred to Cahoma uh, for the 2017 season where he was, uh, was, where he was a Juco All-American and number one linebacker in, in junior college football. Next we have another very decorated, highly decorated guy, Maurice Robinson uh, from Murphy High School in Mobile, Alabama, Coach Nord did an exceptional job recruiting this guy and landing this guy. He's a, a defensive back, 6'2", 185 pounds, uh, three-star recruit, uh, one of the top prospects in the state of Alabama. 
played both quarterback and safety in high school. Uh, other offers, Alabama, LSU, Tulane, Memphis, and Troy State. Uh, but the kid was sold on, on playing here because he felt he could play right away. And, uh, and just a really, really good family uh, that really, really thinks the world of what we have to offer here at Ground State University. Next, we have T.J. Hawthorne, uh, who's a safety uh, from Northwestern High School in Spring Hill, Louisiana. Uh, 6'2", 205 pounds, uh, 2016 uh, selection of the All-District Way, 1-3-A, first team. 2017 Louisiana Sports Writers Association 3A All-State Honorable Mention Selection. Played in 2017 Louisiana High School Coaches Association East-West All-Star Game. Participated in the 2017 NUC All-American uh, Game in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, team placed third in state in 4x1 uh, track and field. Very, very big kid, uh, good looking kid that's gonna be a really, really big kid that can run and cover well for us. Uh, in the second year. Next we have Ryan Fields, uh, cornerback from Cypress Ranch High School in Houston, Texas. His mom is a graduate of Grandma State University, 6'1", uh, 160 pounds, uh, will be a big kid, uh, has a lot of time and room to grow. Uh, Three-star, uh, three-year letterman, rather, at Cypress Ranch High School, second in team all district, all district and academic all district as a junior. Academic All District as a senior, first team All District as a senior, and he had other offers from Army, Central Arkansas, South Alabama, Texas State, Texas Southern, and Prairie View and And then Damian Crum Crumity, uh, which is a transfer from Dodge City uh, Community College by way of Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, he's a cornerback, six feet, 100, and I would say he's bigger than that now, I would say maybe 175 pounds now. Uh, last season in Dodge City, 27 tackles, 2.5 tackles for loss, eight pass breakups. Other offers was from South Alabama, Troy State, Western Kentucky, Kent State, Charlotte, Tennessee Martin, and Central Arkansas. And he's probably uh, one of the fastest, if not the fastest guy on our current roster at this particular time. Uh, but that's, that's our signing class. We're very, very excited, very, very pleased uh, with our class. We lost 13 players last season. We replaced them with 12, uh, and that gives us a little wiggle room to do some other things that maybe we want to do uh, with our current players at this particular time. Uh, but at this time, are there any questions about the class? Yeah, at, at this point, that's going to be my first question for you, Coach Bob, is at this point, do you know exactly how much wiggle room you have to be able to add and or subtract with this class? Um, I, don't, I, I can't, I'm not going to say exactly, but I do have room. Uh, to do some things, and I think that's always important uh, because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, you want to make sure that you're available uh, to to make any changes or, or do whatever you need to do uh, when it comes to anybody else in the future. Do you know what your approach would be if you get an opening or something? What are you looking for a certain position or looking for anything in particular? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, the only thing is we just want to make sure whatever we decide to do it makes us a better football team. Questions? Uh, just talk a little bit about the sorry. Uh, talk a little bit about the recruitment of uh, just Cecil Cherry and, and really just what he's able to bring uh, to not only your football team as a whole, but to this class in particular. Well, I tell you, Coach Terrence Graves uh, has done an exceptional job uh, when it comes to, when it came to the recruitment of Cecil Cherry. Cecil is a, a great young man. Uh, he was kind of dealt a tough hand uh, in the fact that he uh, he originally signed with Texas. And when you, look at, when you look at everywhere he's been, it looks like there's a lot of bouncing around. But actually, it was just kind of a, you know, a bad situation for him uh, because when he left Texas, he was leaving uh, a coach, and that coach ended up being the head coach at the same school that he was going to. So it was just a situation that, you know, that was, uh, it was an unfortunate situation for him, uh, but he's a very, very hungry young man, uh, which is something that we need. Uh, we need that type of passion in our program. Uh, but then also he's a leader off the field in the classroom. Uh, he's just as motivated and just as passionate about, uh, about doing things right academically uh, as he is uh, on the field. Uh, and then he's an even better person. So uh, he's going to definitely help us in that department as far as being a leader. Uh, but the good thing about him is he also leads by example. And we have another, a, a number of other guys uh, who lead in that, in that way as well. 
on defense and then also on offense. I know you started off with red and everything, but with Kiwi's ties here, being a, a local kid, what does it mean for your program? I mean, that may be a few more fans out there in the seat seat. Well, of course, and uh, and for us, that's the way we've always looked at recruiting. We we recruit from the inside out, you know, and uh, we start in the grounding community, and then we work our way all the way out of state. And if there's if there's local players that can do what we need them to do and can help us be successful, then by all means, we want all of them. Looks like to me the big thing you were looking for in your defensive backs you got coming in was size. Uh, yeah. All of them are over six foot tall, and, and uh, there's a few, uh, Damian in particular, that can really run. So just talk about when, when you and your coaching staff, you know, left Brandon to go out and recruit defensive backs, uh, just what you guys were just prioritizing there. Well, you know, I think the thing that's, that's very <laughs> unique about our program is we know what we want. And, uh, and I think that's half the battle is you have a plan and you know what you want. And, Everyone is on the same page. You know, we all sit in there, we all look at the film together, we all break it down together, we all look at, you know, what we want in our particular positions. And and in our defensive back position, we want guys that can cover, we want guys with length, we want guys that can also strike people as well, because there are times where they have to be interchangeable and play other areas for us. So uh, so that's what we looked at. You know, we wanted to make sure that we had guys that that had the range uh, to make plays from sideline to sideline when the ball goes in the air, uh, but then also had the ability to move their feet uh, and play with great technique and use their length to cover. So, uh, so that's been the theme of our secondary. Uh, we've been very, very pleased with how our secondary has, has basically developed. I think Coach Ware uh, knows exactly what he wants, and, uh, and Coach Todd uh, you know, pretty much sets the parameters of what we do. Uh, defensively, so we've been very, very pleased with uh, with what we've been able to accomplish as well. I know this season's defensive back group was arguably one of the best units on the entire football team. Uh, where do you see these uh, this group of four guys uh, two or three, four years from now? Well, you know, there are a couple of them that are going to be asked to, you know, to get in there right away uh, because we feel they have the ability to do so. Uh, but, you know, that's always you know, up in the air, it's yet to be determined because you don't know how they're uh, going to handle the transition from high school to college, the speed of the game, uh, understanding the knowledge uh, barrier between high school and college as well. So, uh, so um, we're looking for guys to come in and play. You know, we don't necessarily, you know, sign guys to redshirt them, uh, but we do know uh, that there are some, you know, young men that are just not ready just yet. Uh, but we always want them coming into it with the mindset of playing right away uh, and being aggressive in their approach to the game. Talk about versatility in your players. Do you think that that's a quality that's unique to Grambling State recruitment? That is huge. You know, uh, we believe so much in versatility. Uh, and the reason why is because, you know, in this great game that we play, you know, injuries are a part of it. And, uh, and you have to have some type of versatility when things do happen. Uh, so when you got guys that can cover and play in more spots than one, uh, it always makes it a lot easier to fill in those gaps as opposed to just signing guys that are carbon copy uh, a particular position. So, uh, you know, we got guys fighting over guys all the time. You know, some guys that are uh, DBs, you know, some guys think that they're receivers and quarterbacks. You know, we got guys that are linebackers that can play running back, you know, but. We feel that that's what makes us really good football, a really good football team is guys that have the ability to move and play in, in different areas, which makes you a great player. Did uh, Keelan's dad call you the day you got hired here to start recruiting his son? No, he did not. He did not, but uh, we did know about it. Um, you know, his dad was, was, was a, a really good player uh, as well. Uh, and uh, his son is going to be a, very, very dominant player. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with his, uh, you know, his, his body is already ready for the college game. And uh, they've done a really good job of preparing uh, Keelan for, you know, for college football. No uh, offensive line, no, so you know offensive line, and how you feel, how you set that position, and two, uh, how you feel about the quarterback position, how they sign one, and who is really going to be challenged? Well, in the last two years, we've signed uh, 
I would say about 10 offensive linemen. Uh, so uh, a lot of them are young guys. Um, and you know, last year we we started uh, a true sophomore at center, uh, freshman, true freshman at right tackle, a sophomore at right guard, and a true freshman, regular freshman at left guard. Uh, so there's a lot of depth there. There's a lot of guys uh, that just needs to be developed. So. You know, you can't have a team full of offensive linemen because you got to have guys that catch and guys that can go make plays. So, uh, so we do have, you know, 13, 14 offensive linemen that are currently on scholarship, and you only get 63. So you want to make sure you kind of spread things around uh, evenly. It's just a matter of us developing those players so they can be effective players for us. Uh, as far as the quarterback position, we're very, very pleased with what we have. Um, I think, um, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, people, look at what we've played with in the last, you know, four seasons. Uh, and they, you know, expect, you know, that, you know, but I think, you know, you can still be effective uh, and throw the football effective with, you know, players that know what they're doing. Uh, so uh, so we, 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 we do have four guys that we feel very, very good about. And, uh, and we're going to take 15 days this spring. Uh, and also, you know, do a training camp to decide, you know, who's going to, you know, come out of it. You know, the guy. You plan to run the same offense even with the departure of the offense coordinator? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. The offense was, was basically the offense, you know, before. Uh, so uh, so it's the same offense. Uh, we will do some things a little bit differently. Uh, but uh, but uh, as far as answering your question, it's the same offense. We like it. Any other questions? Thank you all so much. I'm going to let my athletic director take the floor because he has some other things that uh, he wants to share with you guys at this time. Thank you. Wow, what a, a great, talented group that we have coming in. So I would like to say congratulations to our, our head coach, Coach Fobbs, and, and the assistant coaches for we're doing an outstanding job in recruiting. What you heard, the, the consistent message was good young men. And that's, that's critical for any successful program. And if you haven't noticed that uh, Coach Fobbs has, he has built a program. He hasn't built just a team. And, and that's the difference between Grandma being good and Grandma being great. And Coach Fobbs has done a, an exceptional job at, at doing that. So again, congratulations, Coach and coaching staff. And I also would like to congratulate our, the young men who, who decided to take that step to come to, uh, to come to Grammar. Grammar recruited you because you were a great young man. Grammar recruited you because you were a great football player. Now you have to continue that uh, our greatness here when you get here. So again, congratulations. I would like to uh, talk a little bit about our schedule. We're uh, this is the first time the schedule has been shown. I've been asked, uh, what is our schedule? And this is a, our schedule has been put out uh, a little early this year. Uh, we have four home games, and I'm going to talk about the home games. Uh, well, I'll go through the first few. Um, we start off the season going to Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, they have a new coach this year, so uh, I think it's going to be a, uh, a good game. Then we uh, go down to Northwestern State. They were here this year. Um, and now we're returning that game. Our first home game against uh, Macomb College is a school out of uh, Oklahoma, and that is our uh, former athletes and business and industry day. Uh, the next home game is uh, September 22nd. We play Alabama State. That is our high school day, so we're encouraging everyone to get ready to come and support uh, the G-Men and uh, look at our campus on high school day. I'm going to skip down to our next home game. We play Arkansas Pine Bluff, and that's October 27th. That is Military Appreciation Day. And then the game that everyone has been calling about is when is homecoming? Homecoming is November 3rd. We play Mississippi Valley State. Um, so we have four games this year, four home games. Uh, you know, we, we still have our uh, State Fair Classic on the 29th of September. Uh, of course, the Bayou Classic is uh, November 24th. Tickets will be on sale. We're starting a little early this year. We're going to have tickets for sale 
March 15th. March 15th, tickets will be on sale. We encourage you all to buy your tickets online. You can buy them online along with your parking online. So March 15th, that is something new. It's, it's a lot earlier than what we did last year, but we want everyone to uh, have an opportunity to, to come and watch our championship football program, uh, our band, and just everything that is associated with, uh, uh, with the football game. The game day experience is going to be something that, that you haven't experienced, so we want you to come out and support. Uh, at this time, I will take any questions regarding the schedule. If there are any, since there's not, <laughs> we will, uh, I ask you all to join us, join the coaching staff for some refreshments in the back. Uh, again, we thank you for supporting Bramlin State University and Go Tigers.